From the roaring 20s to the flaming 50s, Miami had every kind of racket, every kind of gangster. They would come down just like anyone else, they'd come down and have a uh, place for the winter. Now the mobster mystique probably started right here back in the 30s in this house on Palm Island. Let me introduce you to the home of Al Capone. Today, owned by a retired airline pilot, it looks much as it did when Capone bought it. Back then, it was just about the only thing on Palm Island. Capone used the home as his alibi when he ordered the St. Valentine's Day Massacre of Mobsters in Chicago. And every major mob had a Miami Beach headquarters. 335 Ocean Walk belonged to the Chicago Mafia. They were all over Miami Beach, everywhere. And so this really was a, a, a community that was really interwoven with organized crime Today, underworld tours hit the hot spots. The Deuce Bar at 222 14th Street was a speakeasy, a gangster's gambling den, now a neighborhood bar. Organized crime controlled many Miami Beach hotels. Into the 1960s, the now quiet 79th Street Causeway was packed with mob-owned clubs that were constantly being investigated here. I refuse to answer the question on the grounds that I may attempt to incriminate me. From the late 30s to the early 50s, the Mafia tried to make Hallandale Las Vegas East. Mafia financial advisor Meyer Lansky was the king of Hallandale. In the 1930s and 1940s, you'd drive up US-1, which was the only road then you could drive on, and you'd see the lights, and there'd be the Colonial Inn, Green Acres, La Boheme Club, all of them openly offering gambling, and able to do that, of course, because Meyer Lansky was paying the sheriff at the time. Corruption was so rampant here, especially in Broward, in 1950, Senator Estes Kefauver brought his committee here to put a stop to it. Now where Florida? Florida, the beach. But as the movie Donnie Brasco shows, nothing stopped the mob from coming here for fun and profit. Okay, Don, this is the take. South Florida was and is wide open. Any mafia family could work here. The Fountain Blue Hotel on Miami Beach was Mob Central. Bellman, Mac McSwain's worked there since it opened. Knew all the wise guys. Super guys, super. Very, very down to earth, very nice, very family oriented. Did these mobster guys have class? Among ordinary people, yes. Among your own people, no. Right. Among your own people, they, they was rough. A hacked up body of John Roselli was found stuffed in a floating oil drum last summer near Miami. Reputed Mafia Dons were always being rounded up for questioning here, but they tried to keep a low profile. Steve Berticelli tracked them for years as head of Dade's Organized Crime Bureau. A lot of them just settled in some of the local communities, in some of the residential areas. One of the things about mob is they didn't want attention. Santo Traficante was the Mafia boss of bosses in Florida. This was his Miami home on Northeast 71st Street. Organized crime financial genius Meyer Lansky lived for years at 612 Hibiscus in Hallandale. Bought this house for $49,000 with a $36,000 mortgage in 1959. In his last years, Lansky lived in a tiny apartment at the Imperial House on Miami Beach. In 1972, I was there when Lansky was arrested at Miami International Airport. He'd been kicked out of Israel where he had retired and came back to face federal charges. Mr. Lansky, how do you feel about being home? He's back in the United States. He's in custody. FBI Special Agent Ken Whitaker arrested the mild-mannered Lansky inside the plane. What was Lansky doing? He was head back on kind of things, sound asleep. He, I said, Man, come on. I kept shaking him. <laughs> I just, oh, Whitaker, am I home? Every morning, Lansky went to Wolfie's on Miami Beach, where hidden cameras watched his every move, even while he talked to old cronies. Now, Lansky must stand trial next month in Miami. I covered Lansky many times. He seemed to get a kick out of the media. You're a nice young fellow. Must you be so inquisitive? It's my job. <laughs> well, good luck to you. I have, I have nothing against you. Lansky donated a stained glass window to his synagogue on Miami Beach. Now look, get away from me. I'll kill you. Lansky's wife, Teddy, could be as wild as he was mild. A Miami television reporter called her godmother. She spit in her face. 
Lansky died in 1983. He's buried in a Miami cemetery. The feds never jailed him. His death signaled the end to the old-time mobster's South Florida lifestyle that began so grandly so long ago.